American goulash. That's right, the first time I was ever served real goulash, I was very confused because they gave me what looked like beef stew. And I was like, hey, where's the ground beef and macaroni? Are you guys sure this is goulash? And they were like, yes, we're sure. We're Hungarian. Anyways, it turns out what I had been enjoying as a child in the high school cafeteria was not actually goulash, but was American goulash, which is the version I'm gonna show you how to make today. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. With a well olive oil pot set over medium high heat, to which we will add a diced onion, as well as two pounds of ground beef. Ideally grass fed if you can find it. And the first phase of this operation is referred to as breaking and browning. Since what we're gonna do while this comes up to temperature is break up the meat as small as we can with a spatula or spoon. And for me, the best tool for the job here is a flat wooden spatula, or as we call it in the business, a flatula. And what's gonna happen as we break this up and it starts to brown, is that you're probably gonna see a fair amount of moisture in the bottom of the pan, which is totally normal and fine. But what we want to do before we move on to the next step is cook this until virtually all that moisture evaporates. And we can see that the bottom of the pan is basically dry. All right, you see that? And then once that happens in some recipes, we'd actually keep cooking this until our beef and onions got nicely browned. But for this recipe, that is not traditionally done. But anyway, what we'll do once we've reached dry bottom status is stop and toss in some minced garlic, as well as a generous amount of salt. And we'll also toss in some black pepper and cayenne pepper at the same time for a little change of pace. We are also definitely gonna need some paprika, preferably Hungarian, but Spanish will do. And then we will finish up with a big spoon of dry Italian herb mix, as well as one or two bay leaves, or in my case, one and a half bay leaves. And what we'll do is stir that in and then cook it for about three or four minutes, which we are not only doing to saute the garlic, but also to sort of toast and wake up those spices. So we'll go ahead and cook that for a few minutes stirring, at which point we can proceed to add our wet ingredients, which for me is gonna be a quarter chicken broth, or if you want, you could use water, which is what I'm pretty sure the lunch ladies at my school cafeteria use. And then we will also add some diced tomatoes, either can or if they're in season fresh, plus one 24 ounce jar of prepared marinara sauce. And of course, as usual, we will rinse the jar with some cold fresh water. And for this recipe, we wanna use about a cup, followed by the one and only secret ingredient, a splash of soy sauce. Oh yeah. Oh, and by the way, some people will tell you the secret ingredient is Worcestershire sauce, but it's not, it's soy sauce. But anyway, we will go ahead and stir that together and wait for it to come back to a simmer. At which point I like to lower the heat to medium and let this cook for about 30 minutes. At which point it looked like this. Oh, and if you wanna skim some of that beef fat off the top, go ahead, but I'm not going to for this. All right, especially if it's grass-fed beef, that stuff's good for you. And then what we're gonna do is raise our heat to medium high. And as soon as our mixture starts to boil again, we'll go ahead and dump in a couple cups of macaroni. And I'm going with the classic elbow, since that's what I grew up eating. But really, any small pasta shape should work. And then what we'll do is stir that in and cook it for about 12 minutes or so, or until it is just tender. And this is not something you'll have to stir continually, but I'd say at least every two to three minutes. And you'll see every time you stir, that macaroni will get a little bit plumper. And of course, as always, your times may vary. So make sure you taste a piece or two if you're not sure. Right, this is definitely a dish we don't want the pasta al dente. And if everything goes according to plan, after about 10 to 12 minutes, you should have something that looks very close to this. And then what we'll do as soon as we think our macaroni is just cooked is turn off the heat and stir in some freshly chopped Italian parsley, as well as a nice big handful of shredded cheddar cheese, which by the way, I should mention is technically optional. Okay, a lot of recipes don't include it, or the cheese is just used to garnish the top but I really think it does wonderful things here, so I add it. And then what we'll do as soon as that's stirred in is cover this and leave it alone for five minutes. We'll just let it sit there resting, absorbing all those flavors. And that's it, after five minutes we can uncover it and we'll give it a stir. And at this point our American goulash is officially done. Except of course we always have to give it a taste and check for salt or whatever else. But I'm very happy to report mine tasted exactly how I want it which means we can grab a ladle and serve it up. And I went ahead and finished this off with a little bit of extra shredded cheddar cheese, plus one more sprinkling of Italian parsley. And if you wanted, you could also top this with Parmesan, which is also a nice choice. So that's up to you. 
I mean, you are after all the Chuck Mangione of this beefaroni. And speaking of feel so good, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a spoon and relive some of the happiest moments of my childhood. As this really was one of my favorite all-time cafeteria meals in school, where it was always paired with some buttered white bread and milk. And while this is most certainly not real goulash, that doesn't mean it is not every bit as delicious and amazing. All right, this is one of those very simple dishes that does not taste simple. All right, we're talking extreme savoriness with a lot more going on flavor-wise than you would think. And above and beyond its comforting, delicious goodness, the fact that we do everything in one pot is a nice feature as well. But anyway, that's it. My take on American goulash, or as we called it back in the 70s at Red Jacket Central, goulash. It's actually pretty shocking how long it took me to make a video of this. Since, like I said, it's one of my all-time favorite childhood, and, by the way, adulthood meals. And if you give it a chance, I think it's going to be one of yours as well. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. <laughs>